what a mad day today, man. Like, really crazy day. What do we mean by crazy day? Well, Bitcoin shoots up, it comes back down, it moves back up, and then it's just stalling. <laughs> Welcome to crypto. Welcome to tonight's live stream, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully, the adjustments that I've made on my computer are going to allow us to have this live stream as smoothly as possible. If not, then we're just going to stick to you, just watching me, have a conversation, and happy days from that principle itself. What are we talking about tonight? We've got a couple of things to be discussing. You've got the SEC gunning for Coinbase, and quite frankly, it's not FUD. It really isn't. Because the SEC, once it goes in and gets its change, as in makes a little fine, pulls it up to Coinbase, Coinbase pays it, it's back to business as usual. That's what happens. Look at all the insider companies or the companies that have been done over by the SEC for insider trading. They're still going. JP Morgan, they're still going. <laughs> and they've got receipts of invoices from the SEC. Fine, 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 fine. The SEC has to stay in business. It's a separate entity, man. It's its own thing. So they got to go out. Gary the Egg needs to make sure that he's keeping himself in business. And that, what better way to do it? Now, it's not the first time that the SEC has actually gunned for Coinbase. But quite frankly, it's just another way to just verify what's going on in the crypto space and start edging towards the idea of regulation in crypto. Now, in my opinion, I think the regulation in crypto is going to happen in two ways. It's either going to go on to the idea of leverage trading, so there's going to be a big pullback on the amount of people that are allowed to do leverage trading, or it's all going to be down to staking, all right? They're going to try and do something about DeFi because we've got some interesting behavior happening in the DeFi network right now, guys, and that's something we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about real-world assets. We're going to talk about assets on the base network. We're also going to talk, and this is the sad truth about things, ladies and gentlemen. This is the real sad thing about it. The Baltimore Bridge. Right now, as we speak, there are a lot of people that are going to go and claim off insurance. That's the truth. That means there are a few insurance companies that are going to be experiencing a big fallout. They're going to have to pay up, okay? The sad truth of the game, ladies and gentlemen, is this is where opportunity lies. Because right now, these insurance companies have been happy sailing to the upside. People are paying their premiums at the fear of a catastrophic event. That event has now happened. Mad love to all the people that may have experienced any losses with regards to this Baltimore Bridge story. It's sad. But when you're in the game of investing, these are opportunities. That's the truth. You know that now you can get insurance companies that are going to be subject to these big payouts. They are, of course, going to experience a little bit of a pullback in terms of price action. So their stock's going to be a bit cheaper. Once everything's been settled, done and dusted, payouts have been achieved, then we'll start to see money coming back into those assets. That's what goes on in the investing world. Everybody runs and goes straight to a chart when Bitcoin is collapsing. What's the first thing that you're all doing? Buying it. That's the truth about this game. And if that's the truth that doesn't sit well with you, then the first thing you've got to appreciate in the game of investing and trading is one man's fun is another's hell. And when you understand that, you might, I mean, you can't really have a conscience when it comes to trading. You can't, you know, and that's the truth. Today, I had a conscience. Today, I'm very, um, I shouldn't be upset with myself, but I always say to everyone, if you have no reason to close the trade, don't close it. I'm going to talk you through a trade today that could have netted me a handsome return. I ended up catching what was the actual low of the S&P just before it decided to pump to the upside. I had structurally marked off where I would be happy to take a profit to only see it completely wipe the board and just continue to go up. And I'm, I'm in my mind, I'm thinking to myself, do I, did I really have a reason to close the trade? What was my reason? What, the fact that I executed discipline and I said I would get out at the point that I would be happy to get out at? 
So I'm going to talk you through that logic because it is something that I've had questions from people ask me. Tino, when do you take a profit? Tino, I've got this amount. And I'm always saying to you all, you know, take a profit, reward yourself. And if you haven't got a reason to get out of the trade, don't get out of the trade. Now, the trade that I had on, I had copied across seven accounts, seven funded accounts. I have to be careful because if it goes against me, even when I hit my time, I'm going to show you exactly what, what had happened in the first instance. And then I had to sit through a bit of consolidation to effectively see the move go in my favor. And not just in my favor, literally go through the top of the room right now. And it's going out of my screen. I couldn't believe what I was witnessing. And I was pretty cheesed off with myself. But I will explain to you exactly that logic as we get into this live. Okay. Moving forward from that, ladies and gentlemen, once we've done all of that, I'll start breaking down a little bit of Bitcoin price action for you all. Okay. Take a few altcoins that you guys might want me to look into, and then we'll call it an evening. All right. So if you are new to the channel, be sure to like and subscribe. Let's get the housekeeping. That's what I wanted to say earlier, Run. It's the housekeeping stuff that I wanted to say. What did I say? Housework. Oh, this guy's a clown at best of times. Anyways, yes, make sure you like. And those of you that aren't familiar with the term ding a ling, what does a bell do? It goes ding a ling. Hit the notification bell so you do not miss out on flavor like today and tonight, hopefully. So let's get with the program. What are we talking about? SEC. Scores big win in lawsuit against crypto exchange Coinbase. Should we be worried? Let's go and have a look at Coinbase's stock. I ain't even bothered discussing MicroStrategy, okay? They are they are cool as chips. Coinbase stock actually took a bit of a turn to the downside today, finishing around minus 2%, well, well minus 3.79%, only because of what's going on with the SEC. But just look at it. The pullback has happened on very light volume, as you can see down here, all right? That's good news for me. That's why I'm saying it's opportunity. After a breakout to the upside, what are we anticipating? We're anticipating a little bit of profit taking so that they can effectively take advantage of going long again so they can build positions. My price projection for Coinbase, assuming that we do have the consistency of price continuing higher and the idea of the Fed's cutting the interest rates and what have you, and there's no surprises... We're going to look to take out the IPO high, which would be sub, well, just above the $400 mark. That's where I'm expecting Coinbase to end up. And the only reason I'm suggesting that, ladies and gentlemen, is if you look to the bottom right right here, you can see that we've had a significant number of accumulation days where the volume is actually higher on the 50-day moving average. And that is this red line right here. Now, this is the weekly time frame, okay? And the idea is that we've had one, two, three... Three weeks of big buying, one week of selling, which hasn't been as aggressive as the previous buys, and then anything else around that. We've had only two weeks of selling in this move to the upside or the last few weeks of movement by Coinbase, which tells me that any move to the downside is the bids picking up some orders and then price is going to end up offering out and going to the upside again. All right. So Coinbase's stock is doing really well right now. OK, granted, we've got this issue with regards to Coinbase. I mean, Gary is happy that he's actually achieved this. We go over to Twitter as well. You can see here that Judge Fallier has denied Coinbase's motion to dismiss and will allow the SEC to continue with its case against the company in regards to allegation that it operates as an unregistered exchange broker clearing agency and through its staking program engages in sales of unregistered or should I say, where is it? Where did they put it? They put it as engaged in unregistered sales of securities. Okay, so look, is it something new? Nah, not too concerned about it. All right, we go and have a look at Bitcoin's price section. You can see we've been seeing the sweeps up, sweeps down. And this is what I mean about Bitcoin. At best of times, it does behave in some stupid way. But that's, that's, that's what happens with cryptocurrency, ladies and gentlemen. We've got to really appreciate that. Okay. Now, something else that we really want to be paying attention to, which is what I'm going to be talking about in a few moments. I'm going to be talking about the top coins on the base ecosystem, okay? Because there's a lot of hype regarding this ecosystem. And of course, with Larry Fink talking about real world assets, you know, they're investing in this. So this is another marketplace for 
everyone to start really paying attention to. Like we're starting to see new things evolving within the crypto space. And you might be familiar with some of these coins. So we're going to be having a look at those very, very shortly. Going back into some hype across the board, Trump Media adds nearly a billion in value after debut. All right, so this guy now is, he's trying to run for presidency and now he's got his stock that's listed on the stock market. Happy days, all right? So I'm going to be paying attention to this, see how the IPO is. They haven't actually released the, the actual ticker yet. I can't find the ticker on Investor's Business Daily, so I'm assuming it's going to be some like tomorrow. But it's DWAC, okay? The ticker is right here. Where is it? I saw it. Um, where are you? DCAW. Here we go. DWAC. And saw 230% this year. Stock which traded on the digital world's ticker. You know, it's, it's very interesting. Well, have I got that wrong? I might have got that wrong, but I can't seem to find the ticker for it. Anyone can share that with me, then please let me know. But anyway, before we get into it all, today, trading, let me, let me jump into that, all right, to help you understand why Bitcoin does have the capacity to move higher, but it's all going to be on what happens in the next 50 minutes. Who's speaking in the next 50 minutes, ladies and gentlemen? We have got our dearly beloved Waller speaking. Is that why the NASDAQ and the S&P have shot up this evening? Well, let's go over to the S&P. Look at that. Okay. So here is the story regarding me and my trading for today. Just look at this despicable green vector candle. Okay. I'm going to draw your attention. And this is important for anybody that wants to understand how the hybrid system operates. Okay. So in front of you is this structure. All right. So just focus on this area right here. All right. Watch this BS. This was a screenshot that I took earlier on because my logic was that I was going to see price go back into this range up here. I was wanting to see price hit the 5292 zone, okay? Now, they had tested the daily open quite significantly, and you can see on the 30-second time frame, we've got a collection of green vector candles, all right? So I came to the understanding that the daily open was going to be a point of interest, and you can see right there that they managed to hold the daily open, all right? So my logic was I'm expecting them to come up towards the 5292 zone, all right? Happy days. We then go into the chart, and we see something else. Here we go. This is what happened. Can you see, if I just move this over here, you can see here that they actually made an attempt towards it. Now, if you remember in last night's live stream, where I was talking about how the S&P likes to create the instance of cause and then effect. Look at the green vector candles. They made the move to the upside. So my trades were good until it got to this point here. I wanted to see a return towards the 5292. Now, at this point, when price had made the move up towards this area, there was still a level above and there were still vector candles above on the S&P and the NASDAQ that they had yet to recover. So my logic in my head was, look, I I'm expecting it to go even higher. But I had to sit through a drawdown. Look, red vector candles that were right there on the NASDAQ. I was only assuming that the NASDAQ was going to come back up and hit this point later on, which is what justified me in holding onto this trade. They had come back down and recovered all of the green vector candle. They came and tested the VWAP, gave me this little W formation. And I was like, there's only every reason for it to continue back up to hit my target. So I held my trades. On the back of holding my trades, we ended up seeing this. Happy days. So the move worked out in our favor. They went all the way up to 5292. That's exactly what I wanted. Now, my entry was at the 5,280, and I closed off around the 5,288 and 90. I averaged out between several positions on several accounts. And I was like, yeah, man, I'm cool with that. The results for that, ladies and gentlemen, today, where we at? Let's just pull that up. Okay, so last night we hit the milestone of 100,000 on our funded accounts. And now we've gone to $16,975. So that would be this right here. And over two days, we've done, I've done well in terms of trading. So we've executed 57 trades over two days. 
And um, we've got a ninety four percent win rate. That's really high. Only lost three trades. And collectively, amongst all these positions, we've cleared around sixteen thousand. Yeah, about sixteen thousand dollars of profit today on our accounts. Okay, so. There's that right there. You can't really see it. It's too small. That's why I take a screenshot of it. Let's clear that. Come on. Why are you doing that? There we go. So, yeah, we did well today. And that's copied a position over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven accounts. I took trades on seven accounts. And this is why I'm cheesed off. Because that win could have put me easily at $135,000. Easy. Could have had a 30 grand day today. I had no reason to close the trade. No reason whatsoever. None. I'm pretty cheesed off. I had no reason. And this is where I'm toying with myself saying, listen, you had a target, it hit it. When you've got a target, you take it and then you respect the market because not every time is it going to do that. And this is where you learn to break or bend the rules. I'm still looking at it saying to myself, do I have every reason to get out of the trade? And I didn't have any reason other than it hit my target and it gave me a good return for the day. I can't complain about that return. And I can't really dwell on shoulda, woulda, coulda, I coulda made X, Y, and Z. I did it. And this is where you fall into that mindset of how did you know? Well, you didn't. So then that's why I bring myself back into the fray of things and I say, maybe, you know, what did I do correctly? I stuck to my discipline. I gave myself a projection. I waited for it and it came into fruition. I have to be happy with that because not every time is it going to go up. Look at what had happened here. It went up towards my target. It didn't hit it. Look, it rejected it. If I ended up holding the position, they could have collapsed price. Then all of a sudden it just continued up. So you could call it a wild phenomena in the marketplace. All right. But when you're considering the depth of market, there was a reason why all this pressure down here and all the collection of the green vectors was holding price. And when you look into order flow, you'll see there was lots of orders coming in at low points of the candles, preventing price from going any further to the downside. And which was only giving me a reason to believe it was going to continue back up. OK. That was my day today. Could have made some, but didn't. Well, we did, but we didn't make what we could have made. But in my head, I had no idea that it was going to go like that. So that's where I say to myself, I'm cool with that. I can't really complain about that story, okay? But we're doing okay on those funded accounts. Now, going back into, just before we go into Bitcoin price action, the opportunity. This is where it gets a little bit sad. Car makers and insurers brace for Baltimore bridge collapse fallout. Supplies face bottlenecks in crucial US entry point for vehicles while repair bill estimates soar. We don't know what's going on inside of all of this stuff, but you can imagine how much money it's going to cost. Okay. Car makers preparing for months of lower sales as they reroute shipments away from Baltimore. So we have got opportunity here. You've got people that are claiming the insurance on any of their vehicles. You've got actual car makers or they're, they're going to be behind on their stock. People are going to be a bit upset. They're going to be calling back their deposits and what have you. That is where opportunity comes into play. So let's look at insurance, for example. Look at this. These are the largest U.S. insurance stocks by market cap. You've got PGR, you've got C. Chubb, you've got Marsh and McLennan. And these are all big market cap stocks. Now, to go and pick a stock that's going to be seeing the, the pressure of this, okay? So here's an example. Let's pull up, pull up PGR. Here we go. Progressive. So it's an insurance company, and now we've got insurance as a sector. So we're going to be paying attention to those guys. And these offers private passenger automobile insurance policies in 50 states in the District of Columbia. Okay, so you can see these guys have been going up and up and up. And if we were to consider price action, we could assume that at some point they're going to sharply retrace. Well, they haven't actually put any progress in to actually make any claims. All right, so progressive could be in line for a little bit of a correction if it's one of the guys or the insurers who are effectively going to be subject to this situation in Baltimore. You've got another one over here, CB, a household name that everybody knows. So we go have a look at that. We can see same industry as well. <clears throat> Where are we at? Again, $258, same story, okay? Seems like insurance is going up because nothing bad is really happening. No one's really making any claims per se. Okay. So this is where it gets a bit interesting. So 
I mean, look, this is a Swiss company offering property and casualty insurance and reinsurances world products worldwide. Will these guys be subject to it? It all depends if they do have a client base in the US. So these are things that you want to be taking into consideration. Ideally, you want to focus on the companies on the in the US who are actually offering these services to people in the US. All right. Then you go into cars. So that could be Tesla. That could be Ford. That could be uh, who else is on there? Um, give me some. Give me some list of car, car company. Neo. You don't know. Some car companies are now going to be subject to what's gone on in Baltimore. But this is what I'm trying to convey to you all. It's about <clears throat> it's about being able to get the opportunity. All right. Good old Dow Jones. That guy back in the day. How was he able to make so much money off the stock market? Because he would invest in commodities. And he would go and check out all the industries, well, industrial revolution per se, but during that time when there was lots and lots of activity in terms of the industry, steelmakers, factories, you name it. And he would go and stand and wait to see if the chimneys of the steelmakers were actually pumping smoke. If they were pumping smoke and they were doing it for a certain period of time, he would understand that there is contracts for demand for steel. He would invest in steel and he would see mad returns because as long as the steel chimneys were working, that meant that they had contracts and demand for steel, the value of the stock would naturally be going up. Tell me why that same logic is no different to the way we are today. You look at Bitcoin. You want to buy Bitcoin. What's the first thing you do? You want to have a look at its price. Next thing you do is you want to have a look at what could affect its price. You might go into its on-chain. You might have a look at some other things. You might pay attention to Coinbase. You might have a look at BlackRock right now, luxury that we didn't have before. All right? Because before, all you could do was just work on on-chain analytics, look at rainbows, and hope that Twitter was going to pump something up or Elon to say something on there that would lead Bitcoin higher. All right? Now you've got way more information. You can now take the correlation of crypto stocks and have a look at how they are going to be impacted, especially with this story about the SEC. Because Coinbase is the big daddy. And MicroStrategy is not a cryptocurrency stock. It's a company that holds a lot of Bitcoin. It does not categorize them as a cryptocurrency stock. Riot, Mara, Coinbase, okay, Bitfarms. These are companies that are listed on the stock market that effectively are all to do with cryptocurrency. So you want to pay attention to the big dog, and the big dog is Coinbase. That's the first one that was, you know, that got the main attention. So however Coinbase is doing, usually going to be the same for Mara, usually going to be the same for Riot. Now, of course, these crypto mining companies, all right, we're coming to the halving. So they're now obviously selling their Bitcoin and making sure that they can maintain their operating costs so that they can then catch up and keep up with the fact that the halving means that they're going to be losing half the supply, not half the supply, sorry, they're going to be only earning half the reward because of the halving event, all right? So take that information, all right? And when you are getting involved in investing, like for me, I've invested in Reddit, okay? Why am I investing in Reddit? Only because of the hype behind Wall Street Bets. There is a community within Reddit that is all out for Reddit. But at the same time, there's guys in there that don't like Reddit. They're going to short it. They're going to put pressure on it. And Wall Street Bets was renowned for the AMC hype, GameStop. They wanted to stick it to the in institutional investors, right? Now we've got that same company, Reddit, which is the platform for Wall Street Bets that's been listed on the stock market, now gunning for liquidity, seeking investment from investors, some Wall Street bets players aren't happy with it. Some of them are happy with it. They might go into believing in it. And we've also got Reddit in the same category as Meta. So if Meta's doing well, we can assume that Reddit's going to be doing well. That's the reason why I've taken the trade. Nothing to do with the fundamentals. I don't know the fundamentals just yet. I have no idea what the fundamentals are. I'm only going on the idea of the IPO and how much money they managed to raise in their first trading day. Massive amounts. About 800 million, I think it was. So that's a lot of liquidity that Reddit can effectively put to work. And it's in the same sector as Meta. So they're obviously going to be doing something in the future. And at $60 a share, we'll have a look at it in a second. But $60 a share, that is cheap for Reddit. Sorry, that is cheap. Very cheap. Okay. So that's how you want to... I, I don't do it on price action on IPOs, especially IPOs. All right. But these things that we've just discussed... With regards to Baltimore Bridge, the it's the opportunity, and that's the sad truth, man. 
That's the sad truth. Luckily, we don't have that with Bitcoin. All right. We don't have to wait for a catastrophe in cryptocurrency because cryptocurrency is catastrophic. <laughs> FTX, Qcoin, you've got all sorts and Luna. That seems to happen. But what's the common theme? The common theme is Bitcoin becomes a discount and then it comes straight back up again. And there's no qualms about that. We're cool with that. And it's going to be the same thing for Coinbase. Once this SEC is done with its taxing and trying to find them all, we're effectively going to see that benefit in Coinbase and it's just going to come back up again. So I'm not too concerned about the Coinbase story anyways. All right. Now back into the chartage. Let's go over here and put this away. We'll clear that. And let's now just go into a little bit of price action with Bitcoin to understand where we are. So a bit of a treacherous day today. So I asked you guys a question in the in the chat right now. Okay, so let's have a look at where we are. 1600 of you in the live, mad love and respect. 1064 of you have actually voted. That is divine. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. But it's a little bit of a poor effort when we look at how many likes there are. 376 likes. That's embarrassing. So a bit of housekeeping while we get into this price action discussion. If you don't mind, like the stream, ladies and gentlemen, it does help us with the algorithm. All right. Cool. So, <clears throat> so far, out of the 1,077 votes, 37% of you believe that a big correction is coming. 35% of you are loading the bag. You don't think it's actually, you know, they don't think it's that the 74K is the ultimate high. And 28% of you believe that 60K is the new 20K. Okay. All right, then. So I'm going to keep that going. All right. And let's see if we can match the votes to the number of people in the live with the likes. That's all you need to do, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully going to give you a little bit of flavor right now with regards to the chart. And then we'll call it a night. So here we go. Daily time frame. What have we got? Funny how it's now tapped that 5 EMA on the daily. Okay. Remember yesterday or last night, we were talking about the idea that this area is a valid area to assume the 20% of the 420 method, okay? And the idea is that we want to try and work out if this area here is good to load up on the idea that Bitcoin's going to continue higher, all right? Now, we're going to no get notified about the inflows of the ETF. I think it's today. Yeah, they should be updating this today. And I mean, I'm not really seeing anything else across the board. Let's just wait for this to load up. What have we got here? Um, no, what I'm looking for is Coinbase. That's it. Coinbase Premium Index. This does serve its purpose. I look, here you go. You can see it's getting quiet. We're not really seeing that much movement here. It's sideways. All right. That could be only because we've got some... We've got Wall of Speaking, which I don't think really can bring that much of a problem for us. And, you know, when we finish the live, you might see some activity happening in the markets, especially Bitcoin. OK, and if we don't see it, then we will see it in the futures market. But it's going to be down to what Waller says. But going into Thursday, we've got unemployment claims, pending home sales, which is a big reader for the economy and then consumer sentiment, where they ask 500 people out of the whole of the UK, how do they feel about the economy? 500 people, bro. What a joke. And it's deemed as a high news impact, which can effectively move, for example, a 6.5 trillion daily turnover marketplace. 500 people. Cool. That's where they get their results from, ladies and gentlemen. All right. But Friday, this is the daddy right here. Core price index. That's going to tell us if we are on the right track with regards to inflation, all right? Because it has ticked up a bit. If prices do increase, because we've got to be very careful here. Look, where is she? Oil. It's trending. Slowly climbing up. Got to be careful with oil. Looking left. It stinks. It really does. And I said this before. Investors that are in concern of the economy will slowly load up in oil and then it will be too late for everyone else to jump onto the bandwagon and then that's when they will sell 
their liability in oil because they would have effectively hedged themselves, okay? When you start hearing about gold being the safe haven, all right, and this is really important, when you start hearing about gold being a safe haven in articles, so you wake up in the morning, you've just had yourself a wild night out with a couple of the guys, happy days, you're talking about, yeah, man, I saw that girl, blah, 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 whatever, okay? You then look at your phone, you're seeing everything's going crazy, and you're like, oh, my God, my investments, what am I going to do? And then you see an article that says gold hitting its all-time high as investors seeking safe haven. You're quickly looking at that thinking, oh, my God, I've got to do something about it. They're going to gold. They're scared about what's going on in the economy. Unfortunately, the guys who had hedged themselves beforehand on gold's move down are selling into that rally, which means that the guys who are going to go buy gold on the back of it being a safe haven are going to be the guys that experience the actual pullback, <laughs> where the same guys that were selling it on the back of it being a safe haven and now buying it back up again. Why? Because they've made their money. They've effectively hedged themselves on the rally to the downside where everything was all good and then everything starts moving back up. Gold starts making a move to the upside. Everyone's losing their mind and you're there with a the bag at the highest point in the chart in gold. Same principle will happen to oil. Did exactly the same thing in the subprime mortgage crisis 2007-2008. Oil went from $80 a barrel to $149. Do the math. Once they declared the subprime mortgage crisis, oil slumps. But equity hedge investors had already covered themselves, and they were just buying the contracts back up again. Absolutely wild. Okay? So, back into it all. <clears throat> With all the news regarding Qcoin, and this SEC stuff, I've said this and I'll say it again. If Bitcoin does break beyond the 60,000 zone, we're going to have a bit of a problem. Until it gets to that point, I have no reason to make any judgment on it. As each day passes, I'll be waiting for information to come into play. What's price doing right now? It's trading above the 5 and 13 EMA. Do I have any reason to think that Bitcoin's price is going lower? Well, I need to wait for the next candle. The next candle will tell me if this candle was the start of it because the next candle will effectively try and come and test below the 5 and 13 EMA. And if that candle closes below the 5 and 13 EMA, I could then make the assumption that that could be one point in the chart that I can load up Bitcoin on the cheap for. But those of you that want to play the leverage game and try and short it, then you would effectively wait for tomorrow's candle to a close below the 5 and 13 EMA, because if they do do that, then there's a good chance that the next candle will probably follow suit and then roll Bitcoin back down again to test it in areas of interest where the bids had previously been obtained. What do we mean by bids? Well, we go into this right here and we then say to ourselves, stop logging in. Come on, bro. There we are. Are we good so far, ladies and gentlemen? Are we, are we all good? Are we very well with what's going on so far so good? Yeah? People don't need a report. Stock screen, so Bitcoin should small pump. 520-year-olds dictate our cooked up numbers here in the USA. Uh, well, there you go. You've got that. Okay? And that's the truth. You know? Here we go. So look at how the offers come in. They swept up and they've come back down again. All right? So we know that there's an interest to sell Bitcoin higher, right? And when you see this behavior like every time, man, when they do this sort of behavior, it's clues to entice and probe money to come in. This is where the bids are at, but there's not that many. But what we're looking for them to do, okay, we're looking to test the idea that there is interest in this zone, okay? And we really need to see them hold it because now you see all over here, those bids are no longer present in the chart, okay? They've pulled those bids. But you know, if you watch the last night's stream and this stream from this morning, you'll see that those bids were present in the chart. Now we're starting to see a collection of other bids coming into play, which happens to be closer towards where price is right now, okay? So we just really need to monitor this area. And they could sweep this whole area, which would be consistent with them going down below the 5 and 13 EMA because that's where we are. Just look, you can see we're in that range. Now, this is for the holders, all right? You don't need to be doing anything until tomorrow where you need to see the proof that this 5 and 13 EMA crossover is actually going to sustain itself, all right? If this candle can hold, that's wonderful for us, okay? And the further this candle moves away from this 5 EMA in tonight's session, the more likely we're going to see the next candle try and trade higher, all right? 
But these sort of areas here are consistent with consolidation. You have to be accepting of that. You don't want to be losing your mind. Yes, Bitcoin's got an all-time high, only up there, 74K. They could actually gone for it. Maybe the delay in Bitcoin right now is all down to the fact that they're waiting for more people to come in and show commitment to sell. $21 million worth of, sorry, $20, $22 million worth of a position in Bitcoin to sell at 75000 That's awesome. Yeah. So that means someone's currently got a bid. We assume that there's a bid somewhere here or all the way down here and they want to sell at that price point. So if you were to just go spot on Bitcoin, the only way that you would see an invalidation of this move to the upside is if Bitcoin breaks the 60,700, 60, 500 zone. That's the only way for it. That's the tolerance that you should give yourself. OK, because if you were to see a loss from 69,000 down to 60,000, if that sits right with you, then fine. If it doesn't sit right with you, then you wait. If it doesn't sit right with you, you then have to wait till Bitcoin actually sweeps the high, comes back down again, and then bases out to effectively try and continue higher. That's what you're waiting for. And this is what usually happens with a lot of people. They're waiting for this point right here to break. OK. So you've got people that are already in positions, people that are hoping that Bitcoin is going to continue higher. We know that's to be the case because if we just go over to the glass node over here, where is it? Where's my glass node? Here we are. We have a closer look at where we are in terms of the glass node. Right now, this green line here, okay? People are somewhat... Move it out. There you are. We are in a state of belief. All right, because it's now starting to turn upwards. Very fine, a yeah, small amount, it's starting to turn upwards. So they're in a state of belief. So they think, yep, that's it. Don't worry, we're still good. We're still good for Bitcoin to go to the upside, ladies and gentlemen. We're still good, all right? And this is that whole area. But for the person that is indecisive as to whether or not he should commit the risk to load up inside of this area to see Bitcoin break out, he then will have to wait for Bitcoin to break out and then retest back into this range. No different to this area here. Notice how... They came up to this area and then they pulled back ever so slightly. They came up, they broke down again. But funnily enough, that was the same mirror that they moved away from. It's that that you're looking for. You're looking for this test continuation out, okay? And it's easier when you've seen an all-time high. That's why I always say all-time highs are kind of easy to trade because you know where you stand with the absolute all-time high and if there's going to be some more commitment coming in. The more Bitcoin holds this range, the more likely it's going to continue to build the positions to try and mark up and sweep those highs again. Okay, cool. Hope that makes sense, ladies and gentlemen. Now, moving forward, here we go. I want to talk about this, the, the base ecosystem coins. People have been asking me about it and... Just looking at them collectively across the board, you might be familiar with a few of these guys. Reserve Rights, um, Axela, $2. You've got Yearn Finance, that's climbing up a little bit. Heroes of Mavia, wow, okay. Curve, that's good exchange right there, or DeFi. Degen, Base, let's have a look. I mean, that is very interesting. Here we go. What we got here? When was this actually done? So look, it's 22nd of January and this thing has not stopped going up. Um, market cap wise, where are we seeing it? Here we go. Market cap, 178 million. Not bad, not bad. So this, of course, will more than likely start to retrace because that's usually what happens with altcoins. Someone, you got to remember the guys that have been loading up this alt. I mean, look at that. That is, that is phenomenal. Look at the price of it there. Anyone in that price point that holds millions of these positions or millions of these coins, okay? They're laughing, man. And they had this high right here to sell, which they probably did. Now they've got this high up here that they can sell, which they most likely did, okay? So when you're looking at altcoins, that's the first thing you want to look at. You want to look at how many people are holding a big stack and how active are those guys who do hold the big stacks? Because what you've got to be careful of as well is there are people that... We'll trade on like the Solana system because it's cheap to do so. They'll buy an altcoin for, I don't know, a meme coin. They'll buy $500 worth of it and it goes up in their favor and they'll take it and bank themselves $10 profit. It sounds stupid, but I witnessed it myself watching these altcoins, okay? Just watching how the transactions were coming in through the deck screener. I'm just watching. I'm thinking, hold on a second, man. Like, this is actually wild. Why would you buy something $500 to only sell it afterwards for 10 doesn't make sense. I mean, especially with meme coins like that. But there's a method to the madness, all right? 
But that's exactly what you want to be mindful of. If you're going to play this game of getting involved in altcoins, then I believe that you just want to, if you're going to do buy and hold, then you really have to be patient with these altcoins, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, looking at them right now, you've got Toshi, Osaka. I mean, this is all on base. Base is obviously going to be pumping out. If we actually just look at the market cap of the best market cap, okay? The best winner right now is XRP's cousin, USDC, stablecoin, of course. <laughs> and then you've got DAI as well. But reserve rights is holding out really well. You know, it's doing relatively well. Well, not now, but you can look at it's been doing fantastic over the last three months. So take that list, go to CoinGecko, go and have a look at these coins, all right? Get familiar with them. And then when the altcoin season does come into play, if we go into that, we know that we should see activity because right now we're not in an altcoin season. And when you think about it, ladies and gentlemen, we don't really have anything to be concerned about with cryptocurrency. There's nothing wrong, really. You've got Coinbase. You've got BlackRock buying up all this ETF and stuff. Bitcoin's only 5 6%, not even that. Yeah, about 5 6 3% away from its all-time high. Are we really in, in a bad time? No. SEC's gone in for Coinbase. Fine, we know that, all right? You've got the story of the Binance um, executive trying to run away from the SEC and the police custody. No problem. That's every day in cryptocurrency. <laughs> look what goes... Listen, when you actually look into the filings by the SEC on all these insider tradings, all right, you'll be like, oh my days, man, this is a bad time. You'll absolutely wet yourself. You'll be like, oh my God, I shouldn't even be investing in anything. Right, but it's just business as usual, man. That's that is the truth, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Um, what else have we got here? We've got a comment here. Tina, O N D O project, tokenized bonds. What are your thoughts? Okay. O N D O project. Is there a chart for it? Hold on. O N D O. Here we go. Okay, then. So, all right. Tokenized bonds. Hmm. 24th of January, 20th of January, sorry, keeps on going up. Let me just find this tokenized bonds. ONDO. Here we go. Oh, the yield, sorry. Not bad market cap so far, so good. Okay. If we go into it all, go to the website. You can see institutional grade finance now on chain. Okay, so you can invest in the yield of the dollar. Pick yourself at 5.1%. There you go. So that's really interesting that that's there. High quality asset managers. Black, our funds invest exclusively into multi-billion dollar high liquid exchange traded funds managed by the world's prominent bond managers. You'd never think that PancakeSwap would have something like this now, would you? Could you imagine PancakeSwap having BlackRock and PIMCO on their website? Yeah, man, that won't be happening. Welcome to centralization, ladies and gentlemen. It really is. As much as we like, because now this this is the problem that we've got, guys, okay? And I'll talk, tell it to you like this, and I'm going to let you guys go. Problem with Wall Street is that we were, back in the day, all about decentralization, decentralization. But our crypto ain't going to increase in value without Wall Street. That's the truth. And the sooner we come to accept that, the easier life is going to become. I say that, and let me know in the comments if you think I'm wrong. I'm, well, I don't care if you think I'm right or wrong. As an opinion, I think that witnessing and watching Bitcoin for the past nearly three, four years and always relying on something to happen with cryptocurrency and it never happens, and then all of a sudden we get this story of Wall Street. I've been banging on about Wall Street for quite some time. Till Wall Street steps in and picks up Bitcoin, then Bitcoin ain't going to be doing no big numbers, okay? The spokesperson or the ambassador for it would be Michael Saylor. And the fact that MicroStrategy stock has now shot up to nearly $2,000 a share purely because investors like the idea of the value of the holdings of Bitcoin that they have as a company is actually terrible. They have terrible sales and revenues, okay? All they're doing is just selling the stock. So people have got the fear of missing out. That's why they're going into that company because they think that that stock money that they're investing in is going going into value of Bitcoin. Happy days. They're going to want to see a return from that at some point. We don't know if that's going to be the case. But ultimately, without Wall Street, we're not going to see the beauty of Bitcoin going to 100k. I, I'm of that impression. Now, Coinbase declares in a nice little advert, 52, 52 million Americans hold crypto. 52 million. 
Is that a lot? No, sorry, worldwide. No, yeah, 52 million Americans. That's it, yeah. I've actually got it up here. Look, here we go. Um, there you go. 52 million Americans own crypto. That is absolutely... What does it say? Americans who want to update the financial system, 87%. American adults who own crypto, 20%. 22% of Democrats, Republicans, 18%. And independents, 22%. Jobs, crypto is set to create by 2030, 4 million. Fortune 100 companies that have crypto initiatives, 52%. Fortune 100 companies considering crypto a competitive advantage, 64%. Savings if ACH payments ran on crypto, 2.67 billion. Countries currently exploring digital currencies, 130. Crypto owners with an income of less than 100K, 75%. Americans satisfied with the current financial system, 9%. Crypto owners with an income of less than 100K, 75%. You see why? Crypto or Bitcoin could never go above 100K without Wall Street, okay? Because everyone is waiting for that to happen. And the only way that that can happen and, re and literally reduce that is if Wall Street step in. So step away from the idea of decentralization because I think it's done because of Wall Street. But to make us feel good about it, we make a ton of money off it. That's the goal, isn't it? Ladies and gentlemen, before you leave, remember 20% off the Traders Reality Platinum membership. It will be coming to an end on the 31st of March. We've got a few more days. Sorry about that. A few more days until it actually finalizes where you get 20% off your first month. Okay? Make sure you like and subscribe and hit the bell. And I'll be checking in with you all tomorrow morning. Take care of yourselves, gang. Mad love. Peace.